Hey guys, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at problem 2161 on leak code partition array according to given pivot. So what we'll do in this video is first we'll go over the description and review the examples they've provided. Then we'll discuss different ways we can implement a solution to the problem. We'll call out any edge cases we have to account for. We'll discuss what kind of data structures and algorithms we can use to make this as efficient as possible. And finally, we'll go ahead and actually implement the code and submit the code that we've written. I'm going to be coding this in Java, but if you want to follow along in a different language, that's fine, as the concepts do carry over from language to language. So let's get started. The problem reads, you are given a zero indexed integer array nums and an integer pivot. Rearrange nums such that the following conditions are satisfied. Every element less than pivot appears before every element greater than pivot. Every element equal to pivot appears in between the elements less than and greater than pivot. And the relative order of the elements less than pivot and the elements greater than pivot is maintained. Return nums after the arrangement. So the first thing to call out, there is a third condition implied based on the first two, that is, all the elements larger than pivot will appear to the right of pivot, and therefore to the right of the elements smaller than pivot as well. So we basically have smaller than, equal to, and greater than within the list. So going to the first example, they give us this input here, 9, 12, 5, 10, 14, 3, and 10, where the pivot is 10. The output is 9, 5, 3, 10, 10, 12, 14. So we see that all of the values to the left of 10 are less, all of the values to the right are greater than, and all of the values that are 10 appear directly in the middle. That relative ordering requirement is also preserved. So we have 9, 5, 3 to the left. We can see that in the input, 9 appears first between the 3, then 5, and then 3. So if we had 9, 3, 5 instead of 9, 5, 3, that condition would be broken. Similarly to the right, 12 and 14, 12 appears first, and then 14 appears later on afterwards. So that's the relative ordering that they were discussing. In example 2, we can see the same thing. The input is negative 3, 4, 3, 2, with a pivot of 2. The output is negative 3, 2, 4, 3. So we can see that 4 appears, and then 3 appears in the input. So we must have that in the output as well. So that is how that relative ordering works. They give it as a formal definition in this part here, but it's easier to understand in those terms. So with that in mind, how can we implement a solution to the problem? That relative ordering requirement is going to make things a bit more difficult. If that weren't there, then the problem would be much simpler. We could just do some type of two-pointer iteration or do some other type of algorithm, which would be much simpler to implement and would get the job done. But since we need that relative ordering, we need to do a little bit more work to account for that. So here what we're going to do is we'll use two arrays to help us. So we're going to use a little bit of extra space to help reduce the amount of time that we use. So in this case, we can actually implement this with a linear time complexity instead of something like n squared, for example. So we can iterate over this using the extra space and a constant number of times instead of quadratic. So what we'll do, we'll use two arrays. One, it will call left pivot values, which will contain all of the elements smaller than pivot. We'll use one right pivot values to hold all of the values greater than pivot. We'll also use a single int counter to count the number of times we see the pivot value itself. We don't need an array for that because the value of pivot doesn't change, so we can use a simple counter. So first, we'll iterate over the array once. And for each item, if it's smaller than the pivot, we'll put it in the left array. If it's larger, then we'll put it in the right array. And if it's equal to, we'll increment that counter. So once we're done with that, the arrays will be populated. We can use them to update the nums array itself with the items properly ordered. So we'll basically overwrite all of the values in nums while using the existing array reference. So first, we'll iterate over the values in the left pivot array. And for each ith value, we'll set nums i to that value. Then from that point, for every time we see the pivot, so for the pivot count value, we'll set the subsequent items to the pivot itself. And we'll update the remaining items with each item in the right pivot array. Then we can return this nums reference right here, and everything will be sorted properly. And the reason this works is because in the first iteration, as we add each item to the left or to the right array, we're adding it in the order that we see it. So those arrays will contain the items in the same relative order as they appear in the input list itself. So we're taking advantage of the way arrays naturally insert elements. So let's go ahead and actually implement that algorithm. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create the arrays, the left pivot and the right array. So left pivot values, let's go to new array list. We'll use array lists for this purpose. 
And we're going to initialize it with a capacity of nums.length over two. So that way it doesn't have to grow quite as much. And we're kind of making an assumption that all of the inputs will have roughly the same amount of items less than or greater than the pivot, which might not necessarily be the case, but we'll initialize it with that assumption because it's a good average case. And if we're wrong, then we won't be allocating too much or too little. We'll do the same thing for the right pivot values. num pivot values itself is equal to zero. We'll increment that as we iterate through the list. So in this, we'll do a comparison between nums i and the pivot. So if nums i is less than pivot, left pivot values dot add nums i. Otherwise, if it's greater, we'll add it to the other one. Otherwise, it's equal, so we'll just increment num pivot values. Then from there, we'll update the references inside of nums itself. So first, we'll iterate over the left pivot array. Nums i is equal to left pivot values dot get i. Then we will add the pivot values themselves. So we have to calculate the offset. So that'll be left pivot values dot size plus num pivot value. We'll start with i is equal to left pivot values dot size. i is less than offset. i plus plus. Nums i is equal to pivot. Lastly, we need to re-add the elements to the right. We'll set i to zero and we'll use that offset value to help us increment. Nums offset plus i is equal to right pivot values dot get i. And lastly, we'll return nums. So now we have everything in the order that is expected from the problem. So let's go ahead and submit it and see if it's correct. So I've run the implementation a few times. It looks like we are getting a bit of a wide degree of variability between the runtime and especially the memory. But in each case, the output is as expected. So we have a good implementation. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications for more code videos. Plus, it really does help out the channel. And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have dev articles related to topics such as data structures and algorithms and web development. And we have an online store with mugs, laptop sleeves, mouse pads, and other products centered around programming memes and programming humor. Definitely worth taking a look. Thanks for watching.